Uh, welcome to a new video and a new vlogging test with the Xperia 5 Mark IV. And this time around I'm using the Sony Handrip GVB2T or something like this. The, yeah, it's a Sony hand grip. I can show it to you probably down here in the description how it's really called. And this one has a special feature that allows you to use a special endurance mode on your Xperia smartphone, like the 5 Mark IV or the 1 Mark IV or the Pro Eye even, which allows them to record a bit longer than uh, without using this special endurance mode. So this is a small little test that I will record here to check out how good this is. And uh, yeah, if we get any overheating warning with the smartphone now that I'm using the grip and how good the grip is, because I can, I think, zoom out if I want to. So this is now the ultra wide angle, which is pretty nice. So I have the zoom capabilities here on the grip like a small little rocker that I can use to zoom in even further in if you want eye autofocus test on the Sony otherwise yeah this is now I think a perfect vlogging uh, distance I can go a bit wider if I want to but uh, there we go I think this is the perfect vlogging distance I'm not sure if it's using the one time because I don't see it on the vlog monitor that I'm also using here on the Sony Xperia 5 Mark IV so yeah a nice little vlogging test maybe Let's switch hands here and uh, use this one. I'm not sure if I can take photos, but I have a custom C1 button on this uh, thing as well, so that I can uh, do some actions as well here, uh, which are pretty nice. And uh, yeah, the only thing that I noticed is this uh, Saramonic mic that I have is a mono mic, so it's only recording on one channel that I see here, also on the screen which uh, it means no stereo only mono so it's not using dual stereo automatically with the vlog monitor i have to post edit this and uh, correct this in post to move this uh, left channel to the middle and then we have like a mono um, yeah mono stereo <laughs> so mono in a stereo track basically one recording the stereo track but this is nothing completely new some cameras have the same kind of setting but usually you have some kind of setting as well in the camera software to change this for stereo as well or for stereo for mono as well i mean so switch between stereo and mono anyway why i'm testing the xperia 5 5 mark 4 and the vlog monitor and the vlog grip from sony it's basically very simple sony released just shortly a new vlog camera the zv or zv1 f not the zv1 that has been released two years ago already two years ago and uh, yeah it was i think a smashing hit many people bought it though so they noticed the problems with it very very quickly especially with the stabilization that was not so great by default um, sony has a solution for this because they built in a gyroscope in this camera but this gyroscope is not really used for stabilizing in camera you have to do it in post so what you have to do it usually is uh, it has embedded in the video the gyroscope data as exif data i guess or some 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 other data and this can be extracted by sony software either the image edge app imaging edge app i think it's called an, an app on the smartphone itself or the catalyst browse app that you can get for windows computers and or mac os maybe as well and this one will then stabilize based upon the gyroscope data your footage however the imaging edge app on the smartphone can only do it in full hd not 4k and the only other device that can do uh, 4k i think is the computer so catalyst browser but it takes a little bit longer time especially for 4k than rendering on a smartphone because smartphones usually have powerful chips that are optimized for rendering 4k Anyway, what I can say here right now is that I get a heat warning already on the vlog monitor and we are just four minutes in here. So hopefully this is still recording fine. And um, yeah, Xperia 5 Mark IV here. I uh, will test eventually the 1 Mark IV as well for, for this kind of th thing because I think the 1 Mark IV is out now really long and Sony optimized a lot on it. Otherwise, I don't have a case on my Xperia uh, 5 Mark IV, so this is uh, without a case, so it should be cool enough. 
when it comes to the ZV or ZV1F, it is a vlogging cam that optimizes a little bit from the ZV1, but the ZV1 had like a zoom uh, um, lens that allowed you to zoom in from 24, I think, to 70 millimeters, which is pretty nice and handy indeed. But because the stabilization was so bad, and when you have enabled stable, first, first, first of all, if you enabled 4K recording and had a small crop already, and if you enabled then the stabilization, intelligent active, I think it is called there, or just active stabilization, then you will get even a bigger crop. So you end up with 30 millimeters or something like this, which is like um, uh, this close. And I think this is a little bit too close for vlogging. What do you think? So yeah, this is uh, much, much better here. And uh, this is something that yeah, Sony has an issue with. And I thought, yeah, why not like, let's go let's, uh, one time. This should be one time lens. Uh, why not trying out this camera setup here with the uh, vlog monitor with the Xperia 5 Mark IV? Because I think this is much more capable than uh, than the Z ZV1F. Uh, especially because it has this gyroscope data as well that it used for stabilization. But Sony is doing this in camera during recording. So the resulting video that I will get is already stabilized. So I don't have any issues. And it is necessary to stabilize because look at the stones that I'm walking on. So they're very, very uneven here. So of course it needs to stabilize this a little bit. Um, yeah. We will see how this will look like. By the way, the overheating, the high heat warning is gone already. Uh, interesting. Um, yeah, I only had it once, I think, as well, where it has like a heat, high heat warning and then it's gone. And yeah, then I can record normally. So seven minutes now without any issues. And uh, yeah, we, I was talking about the ZV or ZV1F. 20 millimeters. They did one good thing, fixed lens, 20 millimeters. I don't like that they put a fixed lens in there because yeah, for vlogging might be good, but sometimes you want to just show something else um, in the distance, for example, like this there. And you just want to zoom in and show people something there. I'm not even sure what I'm showing there, but yeah, anyway, this is this and I can still interact with the screen. And here we go, a one time lens again. So yeah, this is uh, the thing that is a bit of a mm. yeah, miss back, I would say, on the, on the uh, ZV1F. And they have some kind of digital zoom there, clear optic, a clear digital zoom or something like this, crystal clear zoom or something, how they call it. It's just like a crop of 1.5 times on the main sensor, which is still acceptable, I would say, but it's not a real zoom. And uh, also not as good as the Xperia zoom, I think. So this is why I think that the Xperia 1 Mark IV and the 5 Mark IV that I have here, is really really a lot better when it comes to recording uh, vlogs or videos in general because you have the zoom capability and you don't have the limit of a fixed lens without the possibility to go even wider if you want to just like i'm doing here right now which is uh, working pretty nicely and uh, let's go to one times i think it is one times now uh, uh, uh. Yes, yeah no i think it's one times uh, anyway this is something that uh, Sony, I think, misjudged a little bit. Also, the price is a bit cheaper than, I think, 100 euros or dollars cheaper than when the uh, ZV-1 started. Off. But the ZV-1 is now, because it's two years, two years ago, also available for the same price. And it's a better device because first of all you get a hot shoe where you can plug in uh, the sony multi-user interface shoe where you can plug in microphones directly you don't need to use a cable or something like this which is pretty handy wireless and wired microphones if you want to or even shotgun microphones so pretty pretty handy indeed and it also has this zoom range this zoom capability and I think overall the better build quality because Sony was a little bit cheap there on their new ZV-1F because everything is made out of plastic and no hot shoe, just a cold shoe and um, yeah, no zoom capabilities as well. 
and I think the stabilization did not improve at all. So they are still using the same kind of setup with the ZV-1. So you have to have post stabilization to get on the same level as with the smartphone. Otherwise, just forget about it because it's just too bad in terms also of the intelligent gadget or active, active stabilization is just too bad uh, when it comes to this. And uh, yeah, this is uh, some kind of a bummer, I would say. Let's go out a bit. Let's check. I want to go 24. This is something that Sony could improve on this um, thing is uh, have some buttons, have some interactivity with the uh, uh, touchscreen at the back or make it a touchscreen at the back for uh, switching between or showing me at least on which kind of photo length I am here while recording. This would be I think a nice uh, touch here as well as eventually uh, showing also um, you know histogram or something like this that would be even better. So if Sony can add this I think that's just a simple software hack that uh, they could add here allow, allow us to show what is hit, shown, allow us to hit or configure what is shown on the back facing LCD, on the vlog monitor LCD basically. So yeah, we have now 11 minutes and uh, I think this is for a vlog pretty long already. I know now the YouTube algorithm is like changing a little bit and preferring longer videos because the watch time could be longer, but um, I'm always a little bit skeptical because I'm not sure if people watch enough and long enough on these videos, especially the long ones, or just skip forward uh, and don't watch anything. Mm, or just skip the video completely because it's too long. <coughs> Otherwise, yeah, there's a plane passing by. Uh, maybe I can show it to you like this. You don't see it. There, 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 there. there. The plane passing by. So yeah, uh, auto exposure also working fine and the other issue where Sony with the ZV-1F was a bit cheap is the focusing system because we don't have face detection focus. I'm not talking about my face or face in general, I'm talking about the phase with pH uh, detection. So that means like uh, we have only contrast autofocus which can be a little bit yeah, bumpy sometimes and pump a little bit here and there going out of the focus and in focus. It's accurate usually but you have these issues where you cannot just focus directly on the thing that you want to have and in the first videos that I saw already from people checking it out it was clear as day that uh, they had some focusing issues there, focus hunting as well uh, with the device getting out of focus and I don't have this so much here with my Xperia devices as you can see here clearly. Though one very important thing is of course the ZV-1 and the ZV-1F have the same kind of uh, sensor or maybe not the same because we don't have this face detection autofocus points but a one inch type sensor which is bigger than the one here in the Xperia 5 Mark IV though the Xperia 5 Mark IV has <coughs> a very large sensor already with 1 over 1.7 the one inch type sensor another airplane passing by the one inch type sensor is a lot better but you remember I was talking about the Xperia Pro I this one also has a one inch type sensor and this one can be used and can be compared with the one inch type sensor on the, the, the ZV-1 or ZV-1F though we all know it's not using the whole one inch type sensor because it's like 20 megapixels and Sony's only using 12 so this is I think a little bit of a bummer. Anyway they should be very very comparable then and uh, the stabilization, the, the colors, the flexibility with the grip to zoom out and in, having a wider kind field of view just like I have here right now. This is something that is so cool on the Xperia devices that yeah, I think the ZV-1F cannot compete with this one and this is where I would say the ZV-1 may made still a bit of a sense because yeah, we have a one inch type sensor and we have this zoom range on the one inch type sensor that we don't even have on smartphones and probably next or next next year we'll get or something very close to it and this is something that yeah, the ZV-1F doesn't have anymore so this is a big downside there and so in the end we end up with something that is less flexible than a smartphone without zoom capability, real zoom capabilities 
and uh, yeah it is a bit cheaper than this smartphone here for sure but we have the problem of yeah, the general problem of that the smartphone is a bit con more convenient it's as lightweight this setup as lightweight as the zv1f and i think convenient in the sense that you can directly upload it basically to youtube or even live stream if you want to and uh, share it with your friends and family and so on and this is something that you cannot do with this uh, with the zv1f that you can do with xperia devices therefore i think uh, the zv1f doesn't make any sense uh, in today's market as a vlogging camera i think you are better off using your smartphone because you get better stabilization out of the box you have the quick uploading capabilities uh, on Xperia devices you have the microphone input that you can directly use and all those things that you simply don't have with uh, the uh, ZV1F that it doesn't really make sense in my opinion. Uh, but what do you think? Are you interested in the Sony ZV1F? Maybe not for, for, uh, for videography so much, maybe for photography because you could imagine 20 millimeters, your landscape, shooting stuff, style full 20 megapixels even though with only contrast you have you can use manual focus there as well so yeah of course i could imagine this being a photography dream though it is like optimized clearly for vlogging and videography with a big button for recording and so on so what do you think about the zv1f or maybe even the zv1 if you own one do you still use it do you still use it as a vlogging cam or not so much this would be very interesting to know um, otherwise yeah uh, write it down in the comments and tell me what you think about the recording quality here on the uh, xperia and there we go i think this is now the one time lens on the xperia 5 mark 4 with the vlogging grip we are now at 17 minutes recording so you can see clearly that i can record more maybe half an hour maybe longer even on this xperia device which is pretty cool and also a very important thing in comparison also <laughs> a very important thing in comparison with the zv1f because the zv1f in 4k has a limit by default you can i think turn it off like at least on the zv1 there was a possibility to turn it off go into the high endurance mode the same kind of thing that the, uh, i'm doing currently on the xperia device so very very similar and uh, yeah what do you think about this one um do you own or did you own a zv1 how was your experience with this one did you even know about catalyst browse did you try it out for stabilizing your shots are you not walking and talking like i'm doing here right now are you yeah, just using post-production uh, stuff or are you just having your camera on a tripod somewhere and then just talking to the camera even outside you can do it inside um, would be very interesting to know um, what kind of uh, vlogging style you are using if you're using vlogging style or video style if you're even interested in this one otherwise yeah i know there are some um, yeah, reviews coming out of, about the xperia 5 mark 4 because it's coming out more and more in uh, different countries and some people are saying yeah it's overheating during recording and so on and that's not very good for such an expensive device but it would be a very cheap kind of fix relatively cheap at least the vlogging monitor and the grip you can get for the same kind of price as the whole xperia 1 mark 4 would cost so i think you could get away with this grip and then recording like half an hour maybe even longer maybe for hours even um, this is something i have to try out i know that there was one guy on youtube i forgot the name who tried it out and i think also on instagram he was posting about it um, about uh, using the vlogging grip and using the high endurance mode there which allowed him to record like over hours and hours and hours which is i think pretty pretty cool because then you could use it even like for some kind of uh, lectures that you gave uh, give or uh, i don't know whatever you like to record long kind of plays or, or talks of someone or something like this might be also possible then to record which is i think pretty nice as well uh, otherwise this is i think now the longest recording time that i had on the xperia 5 mark 4 so far because i was never really testing out the recording here and this is working fine there's another topic i want to talk about and this i can show you so now we have like 20 minutes already so i can talk about another topic the huawei mate 50 
Pro is out now in Germany and some reviews are coming in. So the global release is there. And uh, there's a bit of a controversial topic because you know that I had like issues getting it from China. This is the Chinese model with Harman US. And uh, yeah, because it was cancelled. And later on now, today, I know, know uh, or read from Trading Shenzhen where I got this unit that they stopped selling Huawei devices because Huawei said no, you're not allowed to sell them anymore. Chinese Huawei devices are not to be able to sold, to be sold outside of China anymore. So there's basically uh, only uh, Trading Shenzhen left over. Uh, all the other ones closed down because it was hard to survive in this pandemic and all the issues and more and more uh, device manufacturers saying no we want to ship and we want to sell it in Europe our own don't do this so yeah big 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 thumbs down I think for Huawei they are in a crisis right now and it doesn't really make sense to say okay we, we block even like uh, uh, yeah, importers of devices for, for, for Europe just because, or Europe or even the whole world, just because I don't know. I really don't know. Maybe they think they are losing money when they bring out the same device, or yeah, if they release the same device in uh, on the global market, like the Mate 50 Pro, for example, and people bought already the Chinese version, but you just make the prices a bit down <laughs> then instead of uh it's a competition it's like not i don't know i i really don't get it why they're uh, not allowing this I have to go down the stairs now um it's a weird thing i really don't know why huawei is reacting like this and it's a bit of sad otherwise when it comes to the uh, mate 50 pro that i still have here it's a great device i tested it out there are some videos coming out the coming week for sure where we'll test out a little bit more of uh, those uh, cameras there and compare it with other devices and yeah it will be uh, great the global version comes out or came out with emotion ui 13 which by the way now that i got the newest harmony as free update the yeah besides the free and uh, re being replaced by the 13 in emotion i it's the same version number behind it and i think it's the same technology behind it as well so the only thing they do there is a rebranding from harmony os to emotion ui i'm not sure why they're doing it maybe because people are used to it otherwise uh, the important things about the operating system emotion ui 13 just like emotion ui 12 is based on open harmony in this case open harmony 3.0 uh, basic same infrastructure underlying there and they are using the um, Android runtime AOSP in version 12 so it's not the newest the newest would be 13 but 12 I think is new enough so you get also all the benefits of running Android application from Android, Android applications from Android 12 just like whenever uh, some device some application is um, accessing your camera your microphone and so on you get a nice little green led light in the corner or something like this that tells you that it's using the microphone right now or using the camera or something like this so this is working fine indeed and uh, yeah, it's a nice feature. We have a security center there. I showed you already a harmonious overview and basically all of those features of harmonious overview and last video or the last last video was about harmonious uh, free tips and tricks. There's a new super hub as a super clipboard basically where you can just paste, drag and drop text and, and, and uh, photo files and uh, other things, images onto this one which is pretty interesting as well so basically if you are interested in emotion i13 just watch my harmony as free video it's basically the same just the name changed from harmony as free to emotion ui and i think there's this uh, payment qr detection code is not there anymore in emotion ui because it's not really necessary because we don't have qr payments uh, so much here in europe there's i think only blue code that is available mainly in austria also some some stores here in Germany are doing this. Otherwise, yeah, if you're interested in uh, Huawei devices, I have some videos coming there and also some videos in the playlist so you can take a look at this one as well. I know probably the Xperia people will not look at this, but um, I just want to mention it. If you're interested in cameras and so on, it might be very interesting to check this out. So my arm is getting a little bit tired. So let's go to the ultra wide angle and enjoy this uh, nice, beautiful, uh, what is it evening already uh, day still but the sun is hiding it's a bit of cloudy day still warm here which is pretty interesting 
um, and we have like uh, 24 25 minutes recording time already so I think I will stop it at uh, over the 30 minutes mark so you know that you can record over 30 minutes with this device which might be a limit on some other cameras for example especially vlogging cameras especially also in 4k because this is now recording 4k 30 for sure and uh, yeah nice quality here as well without big issues and uh, yeah what what I want to tell you about is uh, maybe a little bit talking about Harmony US, Emotion i13 and Huawei because there's still rumors going on yeah you cannot use banking apps with this you cannot use payment apps with this which is wrong because I have like Huawei devices since the Mate 30 Pro that don't have any Google services anymore and basically since that day I was using payment applications back then it was a bit harder because banking apps were not 100% uh, supported so I had my banking app running but whenever I wanted to do a transaction and needed a ton code or something that's I needed a second device that had this ton application running that gave me the code that I could use then for doing the transaction but the basic things like how much money you have on your account what was paid in what is what, what uh, was paid out what was going in and out of the bank account this is something that you could see nowadays is much easier because most of the at least the German banks are supporting this in one way or another. So the applications are running, Sparkasse, Deutsche Bank, for example, Fototan and Spushtan are working fine without much issues there. And uh, I think even the Sparkasse Mobiles Bezahlen is working. So the mobile payment system is working. We have Curve, which can use Visa and I think MasterCard uh, credit cards for payment as well. So no issue there with this one. So yeah, this is, uh, I think, a Shim Shim Shimera, I think it's called Shimera. Uh, so you can really use uh, Huawei devices also for payment and banking. Not all banks are supported, you have to check still. So what I know from the German banks is like the DKB, DKB is not working, uh, but other, other uh, devices, other banks are working with uh, Huawei devices without issues. So. Um, just so that you heard about it and I still have to blabble a little bit for uh, three four minutes eventually then I'm over the 30 minute mark and uh, yeah taking you to a little walk here alongside the Rhine and uh, yeah my voice is getting a bit dry but still what am I doing right now just testing for you <laughs> testing 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 and see if this is possible. Again, another airplane passing by. I'm sure if you saw it. Um, pretty loud here. So yeah, we have interesting times ahead of us because many, many new smartphone releases with one inch type sensors are coming out. Oppo Find X5 and Oppo Find X6, I think it is now already. Uh, the Vivo X90 Pro or Pro Plus is coming out with a one inch type sensor. Uh, Samsung's new 200 megapixel sensor, which I think is not one inch type, but still is a very good high resolution is uh, coming out as well and there's some rumors going on that this might be the new camera champ out there uh, the super cheap xiaomi redmi note 12 and note 12 plus and master or explorer edition is coming out with 210 watt charging and 200 megapixels not sure it's coming globally um so i have to import it from china probably trading shenzhen has it there um so yeah uh, ho hopefully they will come out with the 210 watts charging version here as well which would mean in nine minutes you can charge up your whole smartphone without any issue which is uh, mind blowing <laughs> so fast that uh, yeah it's like make yourself a coffee drink it and your smartphone is charged it's amazing how fast this technology goes and when i take a look at sony here for example it's like 30 watts still charging so it takes like an hour or even a bit more an hour 10 minutes or something like this to charge from zero to 100. Uh, it's a big bummer i would say yeah. yeah what can you do i hope they will also improve charging a bit like uh, going at least with the pd standard with uh, which i think it is now 65 watts or something like this or was it like Xiaomi, Oppo and uh, uh, Huawei going this route where they want to have like a new standard which I think starts, I think, yeah, it starts with 60, 65 watts. I hope that the USB PD standard is also going this route so in future devices we can 
uh, really experience then the same fast charging also on Sony devices. So we have now 30 minutes and just to show you that we can get over the 30 minutes mark just leave it running here over the 30 minutes no overheating sign at all no even a hot warning uh, heating sign at all so 30 minutes now over 30 minutes 30 minutes and 10 seconds and uh, yeah no overheating and i think this is it i don't want to stress out anymore your patience and my patience and my arms especially this is training enough also i'm getting now into the city away from the from the street there from the street away from the river to the street this is what i want to say and uh, yeah i'm out of topics out of ideas what to talk about so we have now let's let's do 31 minutes and then that's it and i call it a day we'll edit the audio a bit so they don't have like only uh, audio on the left ear just in case and also probably the quality is going a bit down because like why should i upload 50 gigabytes so how big this uh, video now is if youtube is compressing it anyway so i can also compress it down a little bit already uh, because most of your most of you are watching it anyway on a smartphone maybe a tablet which is like 10 11 inches maybe but not on a big television are you so 31 minutes and 10 seconds now we got into the street and probably you can see some cars in the background and hear them as well so that's it basically for this video i hope it's not over steering this video because i see like it's going into the reds uh, this would be like super stupid if it has the audio set too loud anyway i release it anyway even if the audio is too loud uh, that's it for this video until the next time bye